I saw this yesterday, and it was one of those things like, well, there's too much going on in the NFL. I'll take a closer look at this when I have time. Woke up this morning earlier than usual and started reading this article from The Athletic, Stuart Mandel and Andrew Marchand, and it's like, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. There are some power brokers within the college football system who have finally realized the current model is broken. It's done. There's no way to save it because everything that happens under the umbrella of the NCAA with all these independent universities coming together, any rules they try to apply are antitrust violations that had been hiding in plain sight for years. And the reckoning is here. Currently, they expect the potential liability to be north of $5 billion and counting with every additional lawsuit that comes out about all the different rules that have kept players from getting fairly compensated in order to keep all the money for the schools and not give any of it to the players. So, Chris, what they are proposing, yeah. blowing up the current system, mm. conferences go away, 70 teams guaranteed a spot in this Super League, 10 teams that are kind of at large that you would have the European soccer style relegation and promotion. Oh, okay. You have 80 teams in all. All right. Eight 10 team divisions, eight division winners make it to the playoffs, eight wild card teams based on record, not based on polls, not based on star chamber that tells us Florida State isn't good enough. It's all based on what you do on the field. 16 teams make it to this postseason. It's got a long way to go. The NFL is involved. Brian Rolap, one of the top executives at the league, is advising this group, talking to this group. University presidents are involved. Whether or not it happens remains to be seen. It's going to be complicated. It's going to take a lot of work. But it's an acknowledgement that what's happening now, the NCAA is dead. And the sooner they acknowledge it and try to come up with the new reality, the better off they're all going to be. This is the first major effort to come up with a new reality. Yeah, it is cool from that standpoint. It's good that they have an acknowledgement that you know the system needs to change in some degree. right? The, the basic, and I haven't read a bunch of this, I really just was aware of this this morning. I didn't know we were going to talk about it. Either way, I think I got enough of a feel here to say a few things and all that. But, like, you know, w w one – like, yeah, the system needs to be different. We know that. But I, I would want to know a few more details about this first before I jump in. You know, the first thing I want to know is, is there going to be a salary cap? Because if there's not a salary cap, I don't really give a damn about all these divisions and all that. Right? I mean, so go ahead. Do you got something to there say would there? Be. There, there would, would be. There would be, 100%. That, that, that's a, see, they have been fighting, and I'm glad you mentioned that. They've been fighting against the concept of unionization for years because they don't want to pay the, the players anything. Yeah. Unionization is the thing that saves a Super League. The reason the NFL has a draft, which would be an antitrust violation because it's 32 independent businesses, the reason they have a salary cap, the reason they have a franchise tag, the reason they have all of these rules is because you've got 32 different businesses that created what they call a multi-employer bargaining unit, where there's one union that negotiates with this 32-team collective. You'd have the same thing in college. It would be one unitary body that would negotiate with a union okay. that covers all That's the That's essential. Players. So you would have right. rules along those lines. Salary cap, transfer rules. You know, maybe you sign a four-year contract and you can't leave. This would be a way around the dynamic that currently exists where I'm just going to transfer. I'm just going to transfer. I'm entering the portal. The NFL doesn't have a transfer portal. It's called free agency. You're committed for the first four years of your career in the NFL, unless they want to trade your contract. So that would be the product of the collective bargaining that would happen once there is a union representing all the college football players and the various universities on the other side, they'd hammer out the rules. You can't have those rules now because they're antitrust violations. Right, That's right. what they finally realized. Yeah. We need a union so we can have what otherwise would be antitrust violations. Yeah, that's going to be key to me, at least, to get it by a guy like me. Because, again, I don't want to see divisions and all that, right, with the current way we have right now. And, like, Alabama, Georgia, and LSU are all in the same division and they're definitely one of the 10 best teams in football, and one of them doesn't make the playoff system or just because of that. So how they divide it up, having an even playing field, is to me paramount about that because we're coming off a year, again, where I think one of the dumbest things I've seen in American sports history just happened. A team that lost two games in four freaking years and is – 
other than the Chiefs, I would say the greatest thing in American sports here recently, as far as team sports are considered, they didn't get in the college playoff because they played another team that was great that's in their division, and their coach came from there, and it's a you know it's a it's a rivalry, whatever, and they didn't get in. So that's messed up, and that's where I, it's got to be tinkered with, and it's got to be an even playing field. Because if it's not an even playing field, the top teams are not going to get in a lot of the times, and it's just going to be weird, the whole situation. Here's where the problem's going to come from. The, yeah. the teams that currently run the sport, the conference, specifically the SEC and probably the Big Ten that runs the sport, isn't going to want to give up the power they have. Yeah. The problem is the power they have is going to be gone anyway. They need to realize that it's over. The NCAA is dead, and they're just hanging on as this reckoning comes to full fruition. And as one of the team presidents, I think, or a school presidents, uh, Syracuse's chancellor, said that these lawsuits are going to bankrupt the conferences. So they need to get ahead of this before it does completely and totally collapse. And, and you're going to have pushback. You're going to have resistance. But at the end of the day, this is going to even it out. This is going to save some of the schools that are now mid-level. You know, West Virginia's that's the, president that's the is great involved thing. in this right. for good reason. Sure. Because this is a way for the teams that can't compete with the current system to level it out again, yeah, and that definitely. would be the way to do it. I, I mean, that would be the way we all view college football and want that to happen, right? Pete went to Boston College, right? Pete loves his team. They're irrelevant in college football right now, unless it changes. Some of those schools, the private institutions, Stanford, Boston College, West Virginia, uh, that, that middle-class school as far as sports is considered, they're going to get left in the dust with, with the way the current environment is. But, yeah, it's a good start. We'll see where it goes. I don't know how realistic it is or if it's going to happen, but I, I like the, the basic guidelines of it so far. They got to do something because the current system will not last. Change is here. The reckoning's arrived, and it's going to be expensive, and it's only going to get more expensive if they don't change. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.